Hey guys, welcome back to the Hit Up Rugby League podcast. Today we have another guest on. We've gone on a run with a lot of interviews, which is really exciting for us. We actually have current Brisbane Tiger and the second oldest player to ever debut in the NRL era. We have Darren Nichols. How do you feel, Darren? Yeah, good boys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, mate. Pleasure to have you. What we like to do to start, to start off is run through a little segment called the Set of Six. What we're going to do is just ask you six quick fire questions. So there'll be yes or no, or this or that sort of questions. So uh, we'll get straight into it. All right. New South Wales or Queensland? New South Wales. Oh. Favorite fast food? Thai. Oh, oh fast food. Oh, yeah. that, that count as fast food or? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. All right. All right. All right. Favorite, All right. favorite music artist? Oh, John Legend. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. All right. Uh, early 2022 premiere predictions. The Panthers. Yeah, fair enough. Back to back. Uh, your funniest teammate that you played with? Oh, geez, boys. I've been, I've been in a fair few teams, but. <laughs> this duo together, Curtis Johnson and Brad Loopy back at North City Bears days, very oh. different characters, but oddly funny. Yeah. Oh. All right. And final one, bring back the Biff, yes or no? Yeah, I reckon yes. Just in, in certain situations where, you know, the halfback gets hit late, you know, the front row comes over and they... I might give someone a little hoo-ha, you know. Don't do yeah. that again to me halfback, you know. No, most, most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. All right, no, no, no getting it. Into- boys, I won't, I, won't be, I won't be throwing any punches because I can't fight, but you, know, you always need <laughs> a bodyguard. So uh, one, one other thing we've been doing recently is the trivia. So we've done it four yeah. times for our last four guests. All four of them have got it wrong. Ooh. So we've made the questions a bit easier this time. So it's just one question. I went a bit out there with my other four. So what was the score in your NRL debut? Try and make it a bit more simple. (laughs) Oh, jeez. I know it was very high scoring. Melbourne won, and it might have been 40, 44, 20 or... Sort of close, 52-30, so <laughs> oh, still yeah, not knew, got it right. I knew it was high scoring. Yeah. The, was, the like, thing is about that, after, after that game, while we, um, me and my family and uh, partner, we all went to the casino, so it was quite a late night after that. Um, so, yeah, after the disappointment of losing, we just sort of got washed away a bit, you know? Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Uh, uh, start, starting, your, starting looking back at the start of your career, was there anyone that you looked up to, like as a role model growing up, that you based your game on? Um, yeah, my my older brother. He's only um, sixteen months older than me, so he was a halfback. He started playing footy, so I was always competing with him in the backyard, and he had a big step, and you know I wanted to have the step and stuff like that. So always looking up to my older brother, and then um, you know I love Freddie Fitler growing up, so I wanted to do a big left foot step. Um, so yeah, probably probably Freddie Fitler. And then as I got you know older, it was um, well, still young, but yeah, Joey Johns. And later on, as a as a team, Benji Marshall, mate. Yeah, grew up in the Tigers area, and Benji Marshall was the goat. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. So talking about the Tigers, you obviously played for them in the Toyota Cup for a couple of seasons. What was that experience like? Some people say the competition was amazing. Some say it was bad for people's development. What were your thoughts on it? Yeah, mate, I, um, I played in the inaugural Toyota Cup season, uh, 2008. It was, it was pretty big, like, you know, as, um, as a young kid, like, team, the games were on Fox Sports and it was all happening and, you know, pretty much the, you know, first grade was the game after. So it was a big, uh, big competition, but the jump from Toyota Cup to NRL was massive, like, I remember playing, missing out on Toyota Cup and playing in reserve grade and then coming back to Toyota Cup and the physicality levels and stuff like that was massive. But the whole Toyota Cup event and the 
the program of it was huge. So um, I think it was it was a it was a good concept, but um, it could be maybe you know rewired in the future and rejigged. But people that the people who made the competition would know a lot more now. Um, so I think there there could be some sort of benefit to it in the future. But yeah, making some adjustments. Mm, definitely. In, in 2013, you were named the captain and the 5'8 for the NSW uh, team of the year. How, how, like, how was that feeling, getting named in that team? Yeah, it was good, mate. Um, I was at the Bears back then, and we had a stack side. They were, we were feeder club to the, the Rabbitohs, so we had some great players come through. And Souths were really in their prime then. You know, the year later, they won the competition. So we had a really stacked side. So I was playing with some really good players, and... Um, had some good mentors there and also some great coaches um, yeah, that I still speak to to this day. So that was, that was a nice little thing. And um, yeah, it was, it was a good memory of mine. Yeah, and because you were at the Rabbitohs at that time, did you feel that you had a chance at first grade or was it sort of like just work my way up in reserve grade and see how it goes? Yeah, mate, like when you're, when you're in a system, you always, you got to believe you're a chance. Otherwise, you probably won't be there, you know? So yeah. Um, they were doing pretty good and um, my house partner at the time, I think it was Luke Keary. So he was sort of just coming through and then made his debut the next year. So they were, they were pretty strong in the halves. Obviously had Adam Reynolds who, um, you know, has gone to make on a great career, play for the Blues and be one of the, um, you know, the, the, the all-time great playmakers with his kicking game and general game sense. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know, went in the system, I wasn't full-time. Um, then I was just with the Bears. So, at that sort of stage, things have changed now. If you're with a feeder club and injuries happen, you know, you can get a be a chance. But back then, you sort of had to be full-time um, to get a run in NRL. But things are sort of changing um, as we go on because with the suspensions and uh, number of injuries, you know, they've got to make the, the squads bigger or have that um, flexibility to allow players to, to jump from uh, part-time to full-time. So you see it sort of now where players will get month contracts or you know, little training trials, which I think is really good because it allows the, the opportunities for the feeder club players to jump up and, you know, be a chance of playing NRL. Yeah, talking about the part-time, full-time thing, what is that actually like? Is it just like playing at a club sort of footy team? Like how hard is it to be part-time work and also playing league every week? Yeah, mate, um, obviously it depends what your job is and your, your flexibility around it. Some players, um, you know, they might be a trainee or, you know, like myself at the moment, I'm a teacher. So, um, look, to be honest, it presents really good hours for me. Um, school starts, we still have some stuff before school, but generally the school hours are 8.30 to 2.30. Um, we start training at around 5, 5.15. So it's enough time to get home, have a feed, have a bit of relax and get to training. So... Although your day goes longer, uh, for some you can manage it. So um, obviously having um, you know flexible, um, you know I've got a partner that's great. You know when when I do go to training, you know things can be bounced around and become flexible. So uh, it, it's challenging sometimes for some players. Um, obviously being full time is outstanding, you know, but the pressure and, and a lot of stuff comes with being full time as well. So part time environment. Um, it can be, you know, tiring at times, but allows that sort of more relaxed and fun, you know, when we play games, it's, you know, a few beers after the game and more, um, you know, an environment that's, you know, less pressure and you can have more fun. Yeah. Mm. So you've had the opportunity to play in both the NSW and Queensland Cups. There's debate between both saying which competition's stronger, which is tougher. What are your thoughts on the differences between the two comps? Oh, to be honest now, boys, um, there's not too much difference, I suppose. Uh, sometimes the, the New South Wales Cup can have a little bit more structure. Um, but really, mate, like, you know, you see it now. I think what New South Wales, the last state championship was that obviously COVID's taken a hit, but I think the Bulldogs might have beat early or... Um, but, yeah, I think on their day, you know, each competition can rival, rival the other. Um, even in the Queensland Cup now, if you're you're a top side, you know you can get rolled by the bottom side. I think it's similar. It's become similar now to the NRL. If you're, you're like five, ten percent off, you'll you'll get beat. Mm, definitely. 
Now, you've got to ca captain a few teams over your career. Did you always see yourself as a leader? And how would you describe your leadership? Um, yeah, look, I think, um, I think communication is the main thing for me, you know, being able, being approachable by your, your peers, coaches, and able to send messages across and be very transparent. Um, oh, like, yeah, I think it's just was instilled in me, you know, from, you know, my parents and stuff like that, you know, in any team environment, um, you know, I love the fact to be a leader and, you know, provide, you know, guidance to others. Uh, and it's something now that um, I really take pride in and being able to um, have an impact on my teammates and younger, younger, younger players at the club and, you know, provide feedback and communication and make the, you know, the, the jump from either, whether now it's Colts, the cup and just allow players to feel comfortable. So I think my leadership style, you know, is being open and approachable. Um, uh, you know, I like to leave my actions, uh, whether they're off the field or and on the field. Mm, definitely. And in, in 2016, you won the NSW Cup and State Championship with Penrith. How was that? How proud were you to captain a team to go to win trophies like that? Oh, mate, that, that side, um, geez, there's been a lot of uh, representative players, NRL players that come out of that. And, the ones that haven't played NRL from that side were probably probably unlucky. So they were at that stage, some of those players where um, they were just making that transition where they were, at the start of the year, they were just getting their grips on New South Wales Cup. And by the end of the year, some of those players were too good for New South Wales Cup. So uh, it was really good to be a part of their transition and see them develop into, um, you know, really good uh, NRL players. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a good part of being at Penrith where you could see a lot of players really progress through their pathways and, um, you know, provide any guidance on what it takes to be a, you know, a, a full-time player in the professional um, sort of, you know, lifestyle and, and the different sort of processes that you need to undertake to take to the next level. Yeah. Talking about the state championship, obviously that's something that's come about a few years back. Are you a fan of it at the end of the season, the, the Queensland Cup winner playing the New South Wales Cup winner? I do like the um, the system. Obviously, the only you know you play like say for example at, at Brisbane Tigers now you play the Queensland Cup and that's your whole focus for the year. But then you don't want to lose the state championship because then that's how you finish your season. So you yeah. plan your whole season on winning the Queensland Cup or the host bus Cup as it's called now, and then you know you get that trophy. Then it's a week later you got to back up and play the next one which, you know, you obviously want to win because then you want it's the, the battle of the competition. So I like the concept. Um, uh, and now, like, the Queensland Cup's the week before the grand final. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's a good concept because uh, provide, it adds to the rivalry of the Queensland New South Wales. And, um, yeah, it's good for clubs to see where the different competitions are at in terms of their recruitment and retention process. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so in all sports, there are people. There can't be one club men for every sport, and every player can't be a one club man. What is it like to each season? Sometimes having to play for another contract and always having to move places. What's that like as a player? Um, yeah, it can be tough. But for me, when I was, um, you know, making moves from different clubs, I, I was very goal driven. So my goal was to play in RL. So um, you know, if you had to move to, to chase contracts, and get it. that's what I had to do. But obviously for other players in different situations, if you've got a young family, it can be very difficult. Um, for me, most of the time I, I was a single man. So, you know, to make that decision, it's on your, it's on your own. So um, obviously it, it presents different problems from case to case. But for me, uh, if there was an opportunity, I, I was taking it. So obviously to stay at the one club, you know, you, you, you can create connections and, you know, plant your seeds, but if you've got to make the change, you know, you've got to do what's right, right, right for your own future. Yeah. So obviously you got that, you did your dream of playing NRL, make your debut at age 29. Be, I said before, the second oldest player to ever debut in NRL's modern era. Is that something you're proud of? Obviously it's a lot of hard work goes towards that. Yeah, mate, a lot, a lot of sacrifices. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud that I stuck to my, my dream and really stuck out and grateful to the clubs along the way that gave me opportunities, you know. Mm. Um, 
I got my first full-time contract, I think I was in 25 at the time, so 24 or 25. So uh, it was late to get a full-time contract and, and then to still get a contract after that, I'm very proud of that. So, um, and I was able to build a lot of connections from there. So, um, you know, and now you see a lot of players now still hold on to their dream. So I think it's around prioritising, you know, your future and still maintaining, you know, the, the plan B as well. Definitely. Keeping it on the, the debut, how, what was the coming week before, the, before your debut? What was the phone call like? Did you but a bit, bit of nerves running through you? Uh, mate, it was, a, it was a weird year because um, I'd spent a fair bit of time out. I got a vocal cord injury because my, that's how my uh, the voice doesn't sound like, you know, <laughs> the old now. So, um, yeah, so I'd spent about two months out or maybe a bit longer um, just trying to, I had, had some day surgery and stuff like that. So I'd only played a couple of games that year. So it was, it was a weird one for me. I'd spent years where I'd been you know, fully fit, ready to go. Um, but that year, I might have played a couple of games and then um, one game and then sort of was around that origin period. And, um, yeah, when um, when Mary told me, mate, I, was, I remember I'd just been over the moon and, um, you know, calling everyone. And uh, it was a surreal moment driving back from the gong and, you know, just remembering in the car, I just sort of, the car just sort of crying, like, tears of happiness, mate, you know. Um, that week leading up, mate, I was 29, so I'd been wanting to play first grade since I was six. So uh, I was a fair bit of nerves. And you don't sort of think of that. Like, I played my first reserve grade game in 2008. So uh, the, it was 2018 when I debuted. So it's a lot of games being sort of that next level down, um, sort of thinking about what that step up would be. Um, but, yeah, just very grateful to get that opportunity and, and to have my uh, loved ones come down to Melbourne and, Sort of share that moment with me. Yeah, it was a pretty tough assignment first up against the Melbourne Storm. Was it so like was there much of a pace difference from the Queensland yeah. Cup NSW Cup to the NRL like people say there was? Yeah, I mate, yeah, the, the the speed of the game, everything just sort of intensifies. So um you can sort of do as much as you can during preseason and stuff like that, but nothing really um can get you right until you get those games under your belt. So you sort of notice now, and I only ever got to play three games, but some players go get it straight away and they're just they're just NRL players from the get-go. But then some you'll see make the transition after 20, 40 games. Some, you know, once they get to the 60 to 60 games, they, they go to another level. So uh, everyone just sort of you know, is able to adapt at different stages. Like I said, some from the get-go, bang, you can notice they're NRL players, but other players really take time to adapt to the speed or they adapt to the contact, or they adapt to the game awareness, you know? Um, so everyone has different levels to it. Um, I was never good enough to get to that stage, but I'm um, just grateful to get a couple of games. And, yeah, unfortunately, play uh, such a great team in the Storm, uh, two out of my three games. Yeah. And one, one other of those games you played against the, the Panthers, could you tell that, that that team had something special brewing? Well, I'm... I was there in 2017, so I knew how much talent they had. And, you know, you, you see the, the during skills ga games or, you know, conditioning games or just the competitive nature um, during preseason. So, um, oh, they, they had a great squad there and they're only going to get better. Um, you know, I, I was able to see, um, you know, play with Jerome Nawai and then, you know, be close to Nathan Cleary and just see such students of the game, you know, always – trying to get better and better, like everyone in the NRL. But, um, yeah, that was another tough test. But um, just that real, um, you know, everyone at, tra at training is always trying to get better and help each other. You know, they have that. They, they're all such good mates, mate. They've been playing together since they were kids, most of them. So they've, they've got a bond where, you know, some clubs take, you know, years to get in first grade, where they've, they've been playing together since Harold Matts under 16. So... Um, I think that, that see that is a real strength for the, their, their club. Yeah. So you've obviously played in the halves your whole career. The, there's a bit of a debate between halves six or seven. Which has been the one you've enjoyed playing the most because you've played in both positions, obviously? Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy being, um, you know, a real organisational half. Um, you know, love, love my kicking game, sort of really getting the troops around the park. Um, these days, you know, some... 
sometimes the players wear the six and they're more of a halfback than the seven. So, um, you know, I think the Panthers go about that traditional role where Nathan Cleary runs the show and Jerome's are allowed to play that sort of off the cuff style where, um, you know, you see somebody takes it, but Nathan really runs the show there. Um, so for me, yeah, I'm just, uh, I like to try and do my best for the, the players around me to try and, you know, make their game, you know, better and take them to another level. So if I can organise or just, you know, steer the ship in a way that's going to lift, elevate their game, then that's what I try and do. Yeah. And talking about halves, obviously, you got to play with Gareth Widdop. He was one of the underrated halves of the 2010s. What was it like to partner up with him, the halves? Because he was a very talented player, obviously. Yeah, Gaz, mate, he's, um, you know, so much talent. Obviously, we saw what he did with Melbourne and, and also the Dragons and now back playing fullback, I think, for, for Warrington. Um, but such a skillful player and, you know, the things that uh, he did on the park were, were sometimes very, very amazing. So to get to play with Gaz was um, awesome and uh, something that I'll um, never forget. Mm. Yeah, so so obviously uh, earlier you talked about trying to focus your switch and keep yourself busy off the field and on the field. Are you doing anything off the field to keep yourself busy while you're not playing football besides teaching? Uh, yeah, I do a little, little bit of a um, little bit of coaching and coach footy at the school. So we're we've got a rugby league program um, out in Logan in Brisbane. So we we compete in the GIO Cup. So um, there's a fair bit of extracurricular stuff involved with that. So really, I uh, really enjoy my coaching and be able to you know have a positive impact on um, you know future footballers and uh, instill some values and some skills that uh, I've learned along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, boys, yeah, it just it's it's mixed between you know going from work to, to training and uh, spending time with the misses. Um, yeah, no, I wish I could say I was I was very good on the guitar, or <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not, not much good at karaoke. So um, yeah, that's about it to be honest. Yeah, yeah. The, at the Brisbane Tigers, you're obviously playing with um, Jaden Nikarima. What sort of talents he like as well? Because obviously the talent that he has as well. Yeah, mate. Um, yeah, it's been good, Nickers, mate. He's he's such a good bloke to have around. He's um he's a real larrikin, and you know, even in the in the the bad the bad and the sad moments, he's always able to lift everyone and um you know crack a smile on, on the faces. So it's been um it's been slow for us because obviously they, they come to us sometimes for captain's run and sometimes they don't. Um, but you know, I think our your combination is gonna start to develop and, you know, by the back end of the year and hopefully get some games in first grade, but by the back end of the year, I think we can really click and um, some special can uh, come out of um, the seven and the six. I'll scrap me charger, lads. I've run out of battery. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Liam, you know that um, your, fa- your favourite player, Bronson Garlic, plays with him, so you might want to have a chat to him about Bronson. Really? Yeah. You, you go, you go. <laughs> yeah, Darren, I was just we saying, We're good. We're I was good. Just saying that um, Leah, we did like a prediction thing at the start of the year and we sort yeah. of did a bit of research about it and Liam was like, um, I really love Bronson Garlic. I really love um, what he's been doing. What's um, Bro- Liam's favourite player? What's he been like to play with? Mate, Garlic, yeah, he actually um, he stayed at our place the other week. Um just trying to build those connections between the Storm and, and the Tigers players. But Gala has been good, mate. Um, he runs a really good line. He's got some really good effort areas. So I'm really hoping around that origin time that he gets a game uh, for the Storm. So he's been um, – he got injured actually first game for us. So he missed a bit of a, uh, a chunk of our game. So I'm really hoping to stream some performance together. And then around that origin time, um, he can uh, he can get a game. And shout out to Garlo's pies, mate. Best in the business. <laughs> Yeah, Liam will be watching. And um, just a final question. Obviously, the Super League's an option for a lot of players. Would you ever consider if you got an offer from a UK team to go over there or are you stuck in Aussie? For a Super League? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I've got no, my, no ancestry in me, so I have to take a visa spot. So yeah. it's a sort of, um, yeah, that sort of, it's there's some you know bridges to jump. So oh, when I was younger, I played over in the championship for Toulouse. Um, so that was 
that was 2011. I, uh, I went over there and played for Toulouse. So we played in the championship. So we versed, um, you know, Lees, Featherston and stuff like that. Um, that was a really good experience. Um, would have loved to get the opportunity to play in Super League, but yeah, that wasn't, um, there's they, quota spots and a whole different sort of stuff that uh, needs to go on to get, to get a gig over there. But um, we, we actually had um, Riley Jacks that was signed to the Brisbane Tigers at the start of the year. Uh, he's now playing over there and they, their team's buying to go in the Super League. So, um, oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Well, that, uh, unless, Josh, you've got another question, that's pretty much all we've got the time for today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Darren. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And it's been awesome to having a chat with you, man. No worries, boys. What's your prediction for the NRL competition? Uh, I'm not going with my... I, I'm not going with my Warriors. So they've let me down <laughs> too much already this year. So I think I might have to go Panthers again, to be honest. I, I did them last okay. year. I, I, I did them at the start of the season last year, so I should just back them again this year and, until they fail me. Yeah, honestly, I'm going to have to go the same. I'm a big, big Newcastle Knights fan, and, yeah, no, not, not a great season for us. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to stick with the Panthers back-to-back. Okay, and, and the host plus cup, what are we thinking, lads? Brisbane Ooh. Tigers. Yeah, Brisbane. Of course. Yeah. Of, course. Yeah. of course. For Bronson. For Bronson. Any Bronson day. <laughs> hey, stay with us, lads. Back us all the way. <laughs> so, awesome, mate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers, lads.